It's Reality Check with Craig Price. I'm an idiot. Four minutes in and I'm already wrong. I'm like a monkey. Hello, look at me. Craig, shut up. Hey, I need you guys to do these things. (laughs) You're like a beautiful mind. I'm more like Forrest Gump. So (laughs) welcome to another Reality Check with Craig Price. This week, Ralph Peterson joins me to talk management, specifically housekeeping management. Yes, that's very specific, I know, but Ralph is a real fun guy who's got a lot of great management ideas, especially when you deal with housekeeping. And let me tell you, when I first met Ralph a few years back, uh, I was in Maine to speak to the Maine Healthcare Association, and he found out I was the keynote speaker, and he came up to me, and he asked me if I wanted to be on his podcast. And you know, at the time, I didn't know what a podcast was, not specifically, so I said, sure, why not? I mean... I'm trapped here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the nearest town is an hour away. Uh, I have nothing better to do. Why not? And then we proceeded to have the weirdest interview I have ever had. Um, I know we get off topic here, and we have very tangential, but Ralph has always wanted to jump off script, and this interview is no different. Uh, at some point, he actually starts asking me questions, which is kind of weird. Scott McCain did the same thing. It always throws me, especially when you have people who host come on the show it's hard for them not to ask questions but it's a real fun interview and ralph's got a lot of great management ideas so before we get to ralph though i just want to remind you that if you have a second please head over to itunes and leave a review i mean it would really help us out if you'd left you know either five stars or actually write something out about how much you enjoy the podcast it really helps with our rankings and it it helps with the the spreading and the distribution of the podcast the more people who like it and say they like it the more people see it when they do searches. So I'd really appreciate if you did that. If you don't have anything nice to say, well, forget I mentioned it. This conversation never happened. Also, you can subscribe to the podcast right there at iTunes, or you can go to realitycheckpodcast.com and subscribe to the RSS feed directly there. Um, Also, we have a podcast Twitter feed there that you can see what past guests are tweeting about. Or you can follow the show right on Twitter at realitycheckpod. That's the handle at Reality Check Pod, as well as my personal account, at Price underscore points. And you know what? That's that's enough promotion for today. So let's get right to it. The great, the wonderful, the weird, Ralph Peterson. Listen, we're not professional radio radio yeah. people. You know? No, and, then, and then I don't make any money off. We this. got an idea and a podcast. Yeah. I, you know, a couple of microphones. I and a, spend way too much money on it to begin with. Same do. So did I. Now, that. what the hell is the deal with the toilets? I mean, what do you mean? You're not a toy. I mean, you don't sell toilets. If, Hold on. If someone didn't know who you were, and <laughs> for right. those of the listeners who don't know, this is Ralph Peterson. Hi, how's it going? And. If they didn't know who you were and they just stumbled upon your Facebook page, yes. they would think you sold urinal cakes because <laughs> you just constantly have pictures of toilets that you update about your, where you are. So what is the deal with the toilets? It's t- <laughs> There's two things. There's two things. It started about a year ago where I was every time I was at, I was, I'm constantly traveling like yourself. So we're always all over the place. I wish I was traveling more, but go ahead. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, I travel extensively. You do. You're in your car like constantly because I, I sell for healthcare services. Here. So I run all of New England. So I'm always driving. So it's always a question with some friends of mine of where the hell Ralph is. Okay. So I'm, th- that's number one. That's why I always put where I'm at when I post a picture of a, of a, a, toilet. a toilet. The second thing is, I, you know, how family, you know, Facebook is this weird little, I don't know what it's become. I think that there are people who use it so inappropriately. They curse and they they put their whole life's message out there and, you know, this one's cheating on that one or whatever. And it's like sometimes you get embarrassed over some of the crap that people put out there. So you're actually putting crap. So I just decided I was going to do the same thing, but I'm a little more clever. I was going to do it in pictures. Well, you'd like to think so. (laughs) But everywhere you go, there's just a series of toilets. I'm like, maybe does this incorporate into something? He's got a side business that I don't know about. (laughs) Did you see the one today of the Continental Airlines? Yeah, everything's bigger in Texas. You get a big toilet and a little urinal. Yeah, yeah, everything's bigger in Texas, including egos. That's right. That's right. It's my first time here. It's it's rainy. I was like, It's cold too. You think this is cold? It's snow. 
snowing at my house. No, I know, but this it's, isn't this, cold. This is what it was yesterday. Is cold for Texas. What's, it, what's the temperature out here? Was it fifty-five? Right yeah, it's fifty-five now. It's nice now. In fact, I I got kind of screwed because I was going to wear a thicker jacket, and and all of a sudden I'm out there, and it's like, oh, well, that's nice. Uh, when we get some, but for us in February, thirty-eight, which was what it was yesterday. Uh, well, thirty-eight cold. is cold. Yeah. And I got you on the podcast because, A, we, I, I'm reciprocating. You you put me on a podcast uh, two years ago. I gave ago. you your start. Well, I, I had now a couple. You, I gave you your start. You were the first one I was on. I don't know if it was a start. It certainly was, it was, it was different. But you do a lot of housekeeping management, which is That's a very niche. It's not just management. It's housekeeping management. It's housekeeping management. That's which, right. Ha- which is what I speak on, too. Right. That's why we, yeah. yeah. And, your expertise is not just management, it is housekeeping management, and that's got to be a whole set of weird circumstances, because I couldn't think, personally, of a worse job to have <laughs> than a housekeeper. Me neither. Me neither. It sucks. I mean, I had I worked at a, a subway shop in the, when I grew up, I was 16, 17, and someone threw up in the bathroom, and the boss said, Hey, go clean the toilets. And I said, no. Uh-huh. And he said, well, you have to clean it or you get a job, or you're going <laughs> to lose your job. And so I, I nicely took off my apron and left. Uh, uh, there's certain things I won't do. Yeah. So I work and in, vomit are not the two things. I, I work in long-term care, and uh, people throw up all the time. And you know what nurses do is they'll... They'll throw a napkin on top of it and then call us, or they'll put a wet floor sign over it. And when it's the cone, it's always nice because then the cone gets with the throw up on it too. You learn, you learn to deal with it. No, you're absolutely right. Nobody wants to be a housekeeper, and that's the biggest you're, trouble. You're dealing with disgruntled employees. You're dealing with in the people, interview. They're one <laughs> attitude away from telling you to f off. I mean, yeah. just I can only imagine that they're, they're there because there's no other options. That's right. I appreciate the fact they exist. Yeah, absolutely, but I, I couldn't imagine. Career housekeepers are very rare and great. They have to be great in order to be to do it for a career, but they are few and far between. Very few and far between. So when you're interviewing for somebody who doesn't want the job, yeah. and they're only taking it because, because they need the job, they need it. Uh-huh. And in this economy, a lot of people are doing that, and not just in housekeeping. Oh, I wish that were true. It's not. It's not. No, we have so many openings. It's crazy. Tomorrow, I'm doing a seminar for the IEHA, the International Executive Housekeeper Association, the Houston chapter, and I'm talking about. Call out falls name of that seminar. Talking about hiring. And I'm gonna go through and show what everybody else is doing. McDonald's. Do you remember a few years ago McDonald's had a national hiring day? I think it was last year, yeah. It, it was the greatest concept I've ever heard in my life. Fifty thousand job openings. That's what they said. They go, We're gonna come out, we're gonna have and p- managers on site of every location in McDonald's around the country. We're gonna hire fifty thousand people. Now I don't know about your neighborhood. But there wasn't a lot of McDonald's construction going on in my neighborhood during that time. Well, yeah, they we, had, we do have the largest McDonald's in Houston and in my neighborhood. But that's, is that true? I yeah, mean, it's, a, it's a. I'm it's in. It's where I do all my research. It's a two-story one. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. My my point is is that they came off like they're creating fifty thousand jobs, and they weren't. They, they had fifty thousand openings. And uh, and is that a, that's fantastic the way they spun that I love it I think we should all do that and housekeeping I'm going to have a you know national hiring day in housekeeping but I mean is that because it's just a, those are positions that nobody wants because that's what I think I, I see out there is when I was out of work when I was doing stand up and I was scratching and clawing and living in New York City or or even when I was in Houston when I was just doing things to survive I took any job I could find yeah 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 um, me too but I know a lot of people don't. They, they wait. They think that perfect job is going to come along. And so is that – you think that is the issue? Well, now when you get, what, 20, 90 weeks? What is it? I don't even know what it is. For, I have no idea. For, I'm self-employed. I don't yeah. get unemployment. Unemployment is crazy. I mean, it's it's as if you can go more than a year at this point being unemployed for – you know, get 300 a week. It is – nobody simply wants to work and they don't have to in this economy. Well, three hundred dollars a week is—I mean, it's nothing. That's, it's, that's that's a lot if you're 18, 19, 20 years well, old. Well, I'm talking about the people who are four, 30s and their 40s who are. Yeah, out of work. I don't generally the the 30 and 40 year olds. If they're if they come to work for me, they've been in this kind of work for a long time. Oh, yeah. You know, it, I'm usually dealing with the first time employees. You oh, know, so the, you're the, dealing with kids? Well, not kids because you have to be 18 to work for me. But that's a kid. Yeah, yeah. Come on, that's a kid. No, I, I mean, it's not, not a 15, the, 16. You know, McDonald's niche is the 15, 16, Yeah, but when college age kids aren't leaving their home until they're 28. And that was before the economy oh, went bad. Lord. That was before the economy went bad. That was when good times. Yeah. That it's one of those situations where, you know, you are dealing with a... Uh, a kid mentality, a child mentality. They're not fully. They're not adults yet. They may legally be adults, but eighteen, nineteen, twenty is still kids. No, I I, I agree. Unless I they're just, in the military, then they 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 get taught how to be adults quickly. That's right. Military. Everybody should go in the military. 
It should be mandatory in this country. Uh, okay. I know you don't think so. Uh, no, but, I, I uh, would have died. And <laughs> I do think so. <laughs> I would have been killed early. Uh, no, you would have been fine. No, my uncle was a general, two-star general. and um, Oh, he would have killed you. Is that what no, you're saying? No, he sat me down when I turned 18, <laughs> and he's like, you know, Craig, the military is a great environment for young adults to learn new skills and, and build character, um, but for you... I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> Is that true? He really he, said that? Yeah, he did, because he knew that I would I would smart, I'd say something stupid, or, what are you laughing at? And I would explain it, and then right. I would get beat. I'd be that guy who had everyone got the, 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 the soap, soap. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the towels and beat at night. Yes. Private pile, except right. not stupid. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, I certainly agree, that, but it's one of those situations where you're dealing with young adults there, if it makes people feel better. Um, their first job, or maybe their first job out of school. Yeah. Um, so how do you deal with this entitlement? Because I think a lot of them feel that it's beneath them. They're going to do this, which is why they don't do it. Absolutely. And there's two things. One, I don't. I don't manage people. I manage systems. I don't. If I start to try to manage somebody's life for them, I'm going to get caught up in, well, when does you know, your kid have a doctor's appointment? And what time do you have to get them to school? And what time do you have to be home to pick them up from school? And all this stuff that doesn't help me get my job done. And my job is to clean nursing homes. So I set the schedule. It's from 7 to 3.30. It's seven days a week. And you can work five of those days, Monday, you know, every other weekend or whatever it is. And somebody will say, I can't, you know, I go to church every Sunday. I said, well, um, you can go to church every other Sunday and because it's every other weekend. And if you, you know, there's always Saturday night mass. I mean, you know, churches are open uh, quite a lot more than just on, you know, Sundays, which it used to be. But that's your choice. And they, well, you can't do that. I'm like, no, no, I'm not managing what you do. All right, I'm not going to say you can do it or don't do it or you should do it. Should. Yeah, you I'm can't shut you, the door and have all the old people just not be taken exactly, care of on Sunday. Exactly. Nursing homes, hospitals were open 365 days a year. You know, My birthday, Jesus' birthday, they don't close. So I don't manage people at all. I manage the system. This is the calendar. This is what I need you to work. You either agree for this wage or you don't agree. And then you're going to come back to me a couple weeks later, a month later, whatever, and my kid's sick so I can't. You know, get to work, or I have to be home early because of this, or I have to, you know, go to wait for the cable guy. We all hate waiting for the cable guy taking that time. I shouldn't have brought that example up. It's actually a sore point with me. Cable people should work on weekends because I don't have time during the week. They, they, they <laughs> quote unquote do work on weekends, but they just don't do anything. You know what screws me? And my wife and I, we work because, you know, because we're, we're normal and we have to pay the, the neighbor kid to come sit at our house for four hours, you know, at minimum wage in Vermont, it's 806 an hour. It's actually, I think, 825 now an hour to sit, wait for the cable guy who's going to charge me 40 bucks an hour to be there whenever he gets it. Pisses me off, cable guys. But I don't. <laughs> you you might want to take some of that money you're spending on kids waiting and I invest into some I therapy. I know that might be more you know, you know, return on investment just, kind of thing. Maybe we should just not watch television. You know, you maybe go. it's been working so far. Th there you go. It's been so, working so far. So we'll get so we'll get back All on right, track we'll because <laughs> apparently the, the Comcast is never going to be a client of yours. Uh, uh, no, no, it, not because I don't want them to be, but we just don't have the same schedules yes. where. Uh, we could be like dating, you know, and not see each other. It's not working out. But so I don't manage people. I manage the system. That's the first thing. And the second thing, you have to be a great employer. And in this industry, it's it's crap job. I mean, it sucks to have to clean up after people. It sucks to be a housekeeper. Nobody even wants to admit it. Hey, what are you doing for work now? Oh, I'm a housekeeper at the nursing home. Nobody Sanitation wants to say that. Sanitation engineer. That's when they started to do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm Makeup not rosy. But, but so so the other part is, if you are going to be in this industry, you can't be a horrible boss. You can't be. And there are some effective horrible bosses. Oh, sure. But not in this industry. And so what you've got to do is you, so you bring these people in and just pretty much lay it out for them. It's a, it's a, it's a pass-fail situation. <laughs> it's a wonderful little thing that you learn right off. I used to, when I first started in housekeeping, boy, I would sell you a bill of goods. It was the greatest job ever. And I'd tell you all about the benefits, and then I'm going to give you a break in the morning, and I'm going to give you a break in the afternoon plus lunch, and we're going to pay you for your breaks, and I'm going to give you a uniform and make it all this great stuff. And they go, yeah, but it's housekeeping. I'm like, yeah, it's housekeeping, but it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it's busy work. It's not hard work. Work. It's just busy work. Just you know? uh, the occasional hey. dead hooker under the bed. Hey, you hey. may run into that. You, you don't you actually do, run into that. You won't do that in an accounting. In accounting, you won't do that. If you work, if you're an accountant. Rarely will there be a dead hooker under your desk. Right. But on occasion, you may find I don't know some meth at the. Have you, I know you run, you run it. Don't drink anything out of the blackened uh, glass. Absolutely. Coffee, but that's why they went to the little. <laughs> 
K cups. But I mean, <laughs> there are certain things that you're going to run into that sure. the average person doesn't. But you try to gloss over that. Well, sure. You, you don't figure wanna... once they sign the dotted line and decide they're going to come in, and you got them, right? But it doesn't work. I'll tell you, you know what works? Is when you get somebody to come in and you go, listen, it's a shit job. Can I say shit job? Uh, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> you just, yeah. <laughs> it's housekeeping. It's picking up after people who no longer have the ability to pick up after themselves. It's they can't, you know, for the life of them, hit the toilet. I don't know why. They don't know why. But that's the job. It sucks. You're going to hate it. Do you want it? I know you need the work. And they're like, well, I need the job. You're hiring. I'm like, I'm hiring. But it's going to suck. You know what happens? A couple days later, you know what they're going to do? They're going to come back to me and go, you know, it wasn't as bad as you said it was. So you, you, in your <laughs> position, you've got to really, you got to really downplay the whole situation. So I'm it, saying I always tried to sugarcoat the job and it never worked. And I'm honest with people and I tell them it's housekeeping and there's no bones about it. It sucks. You're going to be called to clean up things you will never want to clean up. So how can you keep some of these people? Because I mean, you, your whole, the, the entire goal is to try to reduce turnover as much as possible, I'm assuming, because each person you have to go find is going to cost you even more money because you've got to go find the person, you've got to put ads in, you've got to train them. So you're spending a couple weeks training them, maybe. What, how do you get them so once you have them, they stay? Well, there's, there's two things. One, I do want high turnover. Oh, you do? I do. I do want... It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a hard position to be in. Could you imagine taking somebody who has all kinds of potential and ambition in the world? I mean, they could do and be anything ever. And break them down. Break them down. And say, you know what? I'm going to give you $12 an hour. And just when they're you know, at their 90 day, at their 120 days, and they're kind of looking elsewhere and you go, mm, I see they're going to look elsewhere and I really like them because they really have some great you know, ability to clean a toilet. I'm going to give them... $15 an hour. That person will never, it's, all, it's, it's like giving them unemployment for the rest of whatever. You know, it takes away their ambition, their will to do anything else. And that kind of pisses me off. I have a 22 year old son. And so that's kind of like in my head, like I don't want him to be a housekeeper. I don't want my son. My son did it. He needed a job. I'm like, I'll get you a job. I don't want to do it. I'm like, too bad. You got to work, right? He's like, fine, I'll do it. He hated it. And I love that he hated it. I don't want him to be a housekeeper. I don't want my kid, you know. And it's that mentality that is the reason why it's so difficult to find exactly. good housekeepers. So then the other side of that is you have to start dealing with that you're going to be always having that new person in. So that's why with the seminar I'm doing on, on call outs, it's about putting the hiring in the front of the house. It used to be, and it still is in some industries. People look down on people who are constantly hiring. You know, what kind of a crappy employer are you? Can't keep your people. You can't keep your people. Well, the truth is, in my industry, you shouldn't keep your people, number one. And two, nobody wants to do it. So it's not like I, I could be the best employer in the world, greatest guy, easiest to get along with, right? Do half the work for you. So we're really you getting fictional here. Won't we're really in. going to the realm of imagination. When we describe you as a manager of all these wonderful... <laughs> I, so I don't I know if we can suspend, it, suspend disbelief that much. You're not going to believe this. I know it. But uh, I'm the greatest manager you've ever met. <laughs> not I, true. I, would, I was about to say, I don't know how to say that without making you cry. Um, no, not necessarily. But, I, I, but I, you're definitely not the worst. I don't, I, no. don't, I don't know your management style. I've, I've but, been the worst. And I've been the best. I usually play somewhere in the middle because I have my own issues with my... You know what I mean? Like... It, managing is all about emotional maturity. Emotional maturity, that's all it is. I need to not let things bother me. And I need to make the stay on the right path and the right decision, supporting my staff, making sure they're able to do their job, have the tools, the time, all that. But I'm human like everybody else. I get an attitude. I get just as pissed off as everybody else does. I have bad days and you know sometimes it comes through. I'm not perfect. Damn, leave me alone. Well, one of the things that I know you do mostly you do your in your business it's mostly nursing homes, but then That's right. but and I hospitals. know but and but I know you do speak to hotels and, and things. So I'm going to ask you a couple of hotel questions, sure. and and you and you tell me how to do this. Yeah. Um. First off, what is the deal with the eight thirty wake up call with a knock on the door to clean on a Saturday to clean the room? <laughs> Can you explain why they do that? Absolutely. And it doesn't matter what hotel it is. I'm not. I can't nope. even pick out a hotel. Here, here's the reason. It's, it's a problem with guests, and it's a problem with front end. In it's the front not my end. problem. I'm paying good money. I know it's not your problem, but listen to me. There's a, there's a disconnect between the guest, the front end, and housekeeping. Housekeeping is always the last to know or the first to know. The only way they can be first to know is if they knock on your door. 
That's well, the they, only way. They no, have no, to, but they have to know at 8.30 on a Saturday, <laughs> don't knock on the door. No, no, no. They don't know that because they also have a schedule. They also need to get in and out. They're there to work on Saturday. They need to clean your room. No, I understand that. Not everybody sleeps past 8.30 on Saturdays. In a hotel, a lot of people do. No, you're at a hotel. You're out doing yeah. something. That's that, why no, you're at a hotel. No, you were out doing something, and now you're resting. <laughs> you're on vacation. But but they, I've noticed that doesn't matter. They, they're at 8.30, they're pounding on the door, which is a new thing. And the other thing is that they everybody went to an express checkout. And an express checkout, which is great for the guest. That means you don't have to go to the front yeah. desk. You mean you have your receipt underneath your door at which is four, always, at four o'clock in the morning, which is always odd when you're, you know, <laughs> you're up at that time. Something goes flying through the yeah, door at, four, at you at four thirty. Exactly. It comes right through. And uh, so you don't ever have to stop to the front desk. So then now, now the front desk doesn't know if you've left and neither does housekeeping and the front desk isn't going to call you. So the only option is to knock on the door. They should schedule it like nine thirty, <laughs> ten o'clock, something think, later in the day. I think you need McDonald's to cut stops the, serving I, breakfast at 10 o'clock or 10. I think you need to cut the housekeeper some slack. I, I would I, if they, they just they I'm, need to they need to clean the room. So. And then total disregard for the dis, uh, do not disturb sign. But that's, a, that's, that's <laughs> I understand that one because people will leave, idiots or jerks will leave it on there and then I, check out. I think I don't know that I've ever had my door knocked on with a doing at the store, Brian. I've had it had to happen twice in the last two months. Well, how late was it? Then how late did it not? It come? was. Uh, let's see. It had to be. It was before noon, and it was after <laughs> eight. It was. It was, at least the time was reasonable. But, right. Right. I was gonna say, but I mean, then they might think you just forgot it there. Right. Or, but they still. I'm always gonna have the housekeepers back. So I know that. And then, so to, 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 then you'll like this question. All right. Here we go. Tipping. Mm. How much should you tip a housekeeper? Two dollars a day in a hotel. Regardless of how big or small or. It is regardless of how big. It's about how many people. Okay. I always tip two dollars, and I tip with a two dollar bill. Again, my wife works at a bank, so we God. started doing it a while ago. Oh, so they can go to the horse track and get it. I know, that quick. I know. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, now they come to expect it because uh, I always stay in the same hotels over and over, and uh, I travel. I mean, I'm in a hotel four or five nights a week, so they're seeing me, and they're like, "Oh, uh, I'm going to get a two dollar bill." I'm like, damn it, did I forget them? Shit, you know. No, it explains why your <laughs> wife is constantly checking the checking bank account. the bank account. There yeah. it is. Yeah. So uh, I changed her though. Well, that was the two things because I, I want to make sure because I, I you, you know, it's like tipping uh, a cab. You never really quite, you know, you you, you think, well, is it going to be this much? I know. Then they add money already in there. Uh, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And they get the room service, and then you, how much do you tip yeah, room service? Everybody and, I work with, and we work in housekeeping, but we work in healthcare. Right. They all freak out over the idea that I tip housekeepers. You don't tip your housekeepers at work. I said, no, I don't. But it's different. It's different. Here's the difference. In nursing homes, you're working a full shift. It's a regular full shift job. In a, house, in, a, in, a, in a hotel, it's not. It's all about your stays and your discharges. So if their stays, you know, if you're going to stay a couple nights, then all they're doing is making your bed, giving you fresh towels. They're not cleaning your room. Yeah, That's a stay. It takes three minutes, right? So they could essentially work 40 hours a week. And then some weeks they work in fifteen hours a if week. If it's nobody, yeah, if nobody's because there. If there, you know, it ebbs and flows, and that's why I that's why I say you tip housekeepers in the hotel industry, and I wouldn't obviously tip the housekeepers in the nursing home. But I've never been the resident in a nursing home. Maybe the resident should tip. It's Maybe coming, they should. It's coming down the pike, you know sir. What? <laughs> Let's put that out. I I think I've been looking at this all wrong. I think residents should start tipping the housekeepers. I'm putting it out there. Well, don't they already pay? <laughs> Doesn't it? I, they it's, incorporate it. They should. I pay and I tip. What? No, no. I'm talking. I don't mind tipping. I don't mind tipping hotels. Tipping hotels, I can definitely understand. Yeah. It's but you've got a nurse or or, or a housekeeper or yeah. at a at a facility. Yeah. Now. On those facilities, there's a high turnover, but don't they really, does the nursing home or the facility, wouldn't they like to have more? St oh, absolutely. Steady, and that's the steady folks. Absolutely. And that is the biggest rub that we have because we, re that would really help, especially when you're talking with people with dementia and end of life care. And it, it's, it's difficult in any position in a nursing home. They're looking for. Absolutely. But they can't afford it. They can't afford it. The, the money is so tight in healthcare right now. The rates, the rate cuts just got chopped 11%. Doctors are taking a 27% hit. Well, they were supposed to go in January 1st for Medicaid, but it's now up to March 1st because Congress is trying to fix it. There's no money or, in healthcare. Or screw it up more. I like, their fixes are usually not necessarily fixes. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. They'll and poke you know, a hole in a boat they're trying to patch up. Absolutely. And so you, with that, we can't spend a lot of money on, you know, dietary aids, housekeepers, 
you know, all those essential but non-essential to care. So how do you how do you work with your facility operators? How do you, how do you, how do you make them feel better? You just can't say sorry. No, because they'll be like, well, we're going to look around because yeah. they, they'll find someone who will promise them someone consistent. But that's just it. I mean, if they want to pay more, we'll pay more. They, they're the ones who decide how much we pay. Right. So how do you but, but I mean, at some point you, you're going to they're they're thinking about something they can't afford and you know, they can't afford it. They just don't know they can't afford yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You can let them look around, but that sooner or later they come back. It how, happens. How do you break it to them nicely? But the the biggest part, I think, is that you have to have a good manager. So we're a management company, so we put all our money, time, and focus and energy on our manager. And so if you've got a good manager, you can be short one position you know, a, a week or whatever and still get by pretty well. And there isn't that massive every day you're, you don't have staff. It's you know somebody works for six, eight weeks, finds another job. Somebody takes and works for the summer, then they go back to school. You know, it's that kind of thing. So it's not like a daily year out. It's, oh, Craig left us. Damn it, that sucks. Who are we going to get? I don't Thank know. And it's God, take, Craig left. Right. And it's, it's going to take time. us two or three weeks to find somebody. Well, then that leads know. me to how do you find a, a good manager who is used to handling that many people? Because most good managers, what you want to do is you want to find someone in, in a, a normal business, quote yeah. unquote normal business, though yours is quite normal. How do you, you want to find someone who's good with people? Who can you know foster a good relationship yep. and maintain? How can you find that person who is only going to have someone for six to eight weeks? By looking at the staff you have already. Most of our most our successful managers are ones who started with us as housekeeping, saw the opportunity, saw they could do more. We saw that they could do more, gave them that position of maybe the assistant manager in training or just the assistant manager, put them in the manager training program. They are our bread and butter, truly. That's how I started in housekeeping. You I started at- as a floor tech. And what is that? Did you just buff- uh, I bought floors, stripped, waxed, went into the assistant manager training program. Goodwill Hunting became the manager. It's the same thing. Well, I'm not as smart as good look. That's true. Or as good looking. This is also true. Or as rich. This is also or true. Or as charismatic. You know what I like about you? Your ability to self-analyze correctly. <laughs> A lot of people are delusional about what they are. You are pretty accurate. I like. I appreciate you. that. Now let's turn this on its head because uh, I got a question for you. Can we play twenty questions? Uh, well, Here we let's go. see. Here we go. Maybe we can do five questions. I don't know about twenty. <laughs> Evan got twenty. I got one. Okay. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Outliers. Yeah. I'm sure you've read it. The hundred, the ten thousand hours. Yeah, absolutely wonderful concept. Love the whole book. In the book. Uh, He talks about this study where these people were trying to find out. They gave university students this test, and the test was to find out who lied to uh, themselves or to others. So the test was – it had like really kind of disgusting questions like, have you ever fantasized about being molested or raped or have you ever cheated on a test and all this stuff? And Yeah, those two questions are very similar. uh, Okay. Uh, (laughs) Wow. What they found out – uh, oh, oh, and they, they did it to athletes. So it was all athletes, and that's who they were asking their questions mean, to. They would never lie and cheat. And what they found out was the people who lied on these tests, lied the most, were also the best athletes, won the most games, won the most swim meets, all this stuff. So I thought of that when I'm reading this, and I thought, what would Craig Price, the realist, say about... The ability that or I think what Malcolm was trying to say or the, the, the researchers were trying to point out was if you don't keep it so real, if you convince yourself you're better than everybody else or you're different. Well, you're assuming. See, now you're assuming that their lie is how much greater they are when right. their lie could be, you know, no one knows I, what I, I can do, but I'm going to do right, this. But I apologize. They, they did follow up with that question. They were asking these swimmers. What are you saying to yourself when you're at, on the board and you're about to go? What are you thinking about everybody else? And they are saying, I'm number one. There's nobody here that can beat me. And, and then they prove it and then they win. So, I mean, it is real. They obviously did. But. And, and then there, then there's stories all the time. Yeah. I never thought I'd be here. I never thought I'd of win. I never thought I'd. So, of course. So for every, I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty much equal for every person who says I can do it and they suck, but they can do it. Right. And they do. Is the same person who went, who is really good and just goes, you know what? I never thought I'd make it. I always thought, you know, I, I, I was okay. I did pretty good. They Maybe they were actually correct in their assessment. At the time, but then got but, better, got opportunity. Or, or they, they kind of reduced what they thought they could do when actually they could do a lot better. Because I see that constantly. They're like, oh, I never thought we were going to be. That's why they pray to thank God all the time because they never <laughs> thought they were going to be there. <laughs> That's the reason. It's thank like, God. I want to thank my mom. I want to thank God. Why? I couldn't have done this myself. 
So I, I think I think it is probably you know I don't know the the number was it an overwhelming number was it fifty two percent yeah I don't know either that's I, my point is that either. a lot of times what happens is um, especially in these statistics books I I mean though this the Gladwell is very good at what he does a lot of these statistic books they can always it's just like politicians you can always twist every oh, of course number. I took statistics I yeah. know I know but so that was my opinion I, I, for every one of those in my mind I can think about all these kids that I see all the time even professionals like during the Super Bowl and after they win they're like oh we just worked real hard and, and you know I never thought I'd be in this position but uh, you know I, I worked real hard so if, if I ever was you know I'd be ready right so that's that's the same I thing. am the the quintessential optimist I oh, want to yeah, see yeah. the, the You're taking pictures of things. toilets. Of course you're of optimistic. Of course I'm optimistic. <laughs> Those toilets are great. But I think that everybody would get much further in life if they thought they could. I mean, didn't you read the book? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think the more people think they can do things, I think the, the ones, more things they'll be able to do. I think the ones that buy into that, yes. But then you have to realize there's a, a whole bunch of people who just don't buy into that. And so, okay. and so that doesn't mean they can't be successful because now we're talking about me. But it's just not a matter of... I think there. Yes, the people who believe that if you have a positive attitude, you will do better, will. But Isn't the people the who secret? don't believe a positive attitude will get you anywhere. You won't don't believe they, the secret, Craig. I, I, the you know, secret. Yes, I, I don't believe the secret. <laughs> is that true? You really don't. I don't believe. I think it's a, <laughs> what. You know what the secret is? Let's write a book about how you can make money without work. That's the secret. Uh, you know what? You know what? Really? Yeah, no, I don't buy into that. Uh, that uh, I totally wish it do. it'll happen. I, well, I know you do. Totally you know, so, do. <laughs> and, and that's how you got from being a, a guy buffing floors to that's managing, right. managing, that's right. managing the people who buff floors. Right. That's right. Uh, but the thing about the dream, secret. Dream, the impossible I, dream. I really do. Uh, the thing about the secret is, and I don't even know if it was the secret that did it. it would, maybe it was another story somewhere along the line, but they were talking about, because I have what they call a weight problem. So I'm constantly trying to figure out ways to continue eating like an asshole but just not show it. No, because if you eat like an <laughs> asshole, the food would go out. It, your problem is it's not going out. I'm not eating it's, much it's like a, an asshole. It's That's... coming in. It's just not really going out. <laughs> I didn't think of it like that. That's good. But anyway, but see, that's the thing is it's, if someone can tell you all, all these diets, how do they make money? They tell people and they never work, but they tell people you don't have to diet. You of don't course. have to exercise. Of course. And you can lose weight. That leaves disease. Calories that's... in, calories out, move more. I get it. Yeah. But. This is what they said. They said uh, the problem that most people have with dieting is they focus on the food that they can't have and they end up having the food they're focusing on. And so that literally happens to me. So it's kind of the reverse of the secret. You know, their secret is if you focus on something positive that you do want, you'll eventually get it. I, I'll tell you, it is true with me. The more I focus on how I can't have a Big Mac, the more I have a Big Mac. Well, I, that's why <laughs> and I it's because it's all I'm thinking about is Big Macs, even though I'm trying to say don't have it. I'm still you saying Big Mac, Big Mac, Big Mac, Big Mac. Well, Big I think Mac. that's like uh, they have cheat days, yeah, which yeah, I yeah. think are good. Yeah, me too. Then instead of going, I have cheat weeks. Well, yeah, and cheat <laughs> years and months, and uh, uh, that's the problem with cheat days is that it people really is they multiply They're like bunnies. You, but if you can do it, and my wife lost has lost quite a bit of weight, and she was able to do that by the cheat days. So instead of going, man, I want a Big Mac right now. Ooh, I can't wait until Sunday when I can yeah, have a yeah, Big yeah. Mac. Yeah. So it's just a matter of perspective. See, it's all about framing. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, you can still think, ooh, I can't wait to have a Big Mac. Yeah, just yeah. not today. Right, right, right. No, I've been doing that. I've been doing. But the secret watching, tells so. you that you can do that. But this, uh, I was just <laughs> saying, if you think about it, this, if you think about losing weight, you will lose weight. <laughs> no, you won't. That's how fat people end up dead because they thought, oh, you know, they it's, they've adhered to their couch, and the firemen have to take you in and rip down a window to pull you out. Not that you're anywhere close to that. No, way, not yet. But, but uh, Darren Hardy, uh, do you know Darren Hardy? He's uh, the publisher, the editor of um, Success Magazine. Yeah. Don't look at me like that. How you are you not reading Success Magazine? It's the greatest magazine ever. Next to Mental Floss. Uh, uh, if we're putting points out, Mental right. Floss, you got to read that too. Because uh, I read like Newsweek oh. and Time. I read uh, news. Those are crappy mag. What are this you is, doing with yourself? Because the success ones, I always read like, matter it'll be you? like the five things that the, the super people do and they only pick out like Steve Jobs. This really irritates me that they <laughs> use Steve. can't stand Steve Jobs. Well, they use him as an example of how great you should be and it's like, well, yes, here is a list of nine things. <laughs> One of them is very nice. Out of the nine. He's super smart and innovative. <laughs> and the rest are horrible attributes. Absolutely. That he would, he would, so I read a lot of these success magazines, and I, I'll pick up an issue, but if there's something of value, because I'm more of an aggregate person. I, I go to places that will – I, I choose to follow people who will show me uh, these articles. So I have other people fettering out ah, all the crap because ah. there's so much crap in there. Sure. Because it's it's what sells. Well, you got to be reading my column, right? 
Oh, Craig, your homework yeah, for yeah. this show is... No, I don't read the... Uh, homework? Does, <laughs> I did more homework than you did when I was on your show. I, I just met you that day, and I tried to read your book in an oh, hour. No, you, you, you literally <laughs> were reading the back of the book while we were speaking. So and then we talked about my book for like three minutes. Uh, but it was, it it was, was a, a great fun time. book. And th- that's the other thing, is hopefully you'll be restarting that up as we're going to wrap this up, is that Absolutely. you do have the, the Housekeepers Podcast. Housekeepers Podcast. Go to housekeeperspodcast.com. And this is listen to this idea. I, I work with administrators all the time, nursing home administrators. And they are like me. They started, every one of them have a story. They started in the kitchen. They started in housekeeping. And they are now running the whole facility. They went from a diet aid to the administrator. I think that's a great, great story. Oh, yeah. I think every time I hear those stories, I'm like, I got to be recording this. And that's what the uh, Housekeeper, because Housekeeper Podcast usually used to be just a management talk show. So we talk about yeah. housekeeping management, problems, issues. And not that I want to get away from that, obviously. It's what I do is talk management. But I really enjoy the story. I love people's stories. It's inspiring. But see, that's the thing that I appreciate is the people who, because that shows if you work hard and you do the right things, you will get your way up the ladder. Absolutely. Where a lot of these success stories, what they'll do is they'll highlight somebody who took some weird way that no one can possibly duplicate only because it's a one in a billion kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then use that as an example of how to, I mean, that's why I get irritated when anything in the news, they automatically try to grab and pull in like a guy, everything in their life ha- can't be a management tool. That's why I don't understand tool. why you're reading Newsweek and, and why, Time Magazine. Because I need to know what's going on in the world. Oh, it doesn't depress me because, again, I don't have this gl- glowing view of the world that, that, <laughs> that reality and facts will take that's away from. Right. That's right. You just, I go, oh, yeah, that's happening. Of oh, course they have a nuclear weapon. Yeah, Darfur. Yeah, that's horrible <laughs> over there. That of makes perfect sense. Iran wants a <laughs> nuclear weapon? Sure. Of why would they, they do. Yeah. So for me, it doesn't depress me. It's just more of I like to know what's going on. I mean, it doesn't make me feel happy, but uh, but there's but every for every one of those, you get the thing about how you know the whales were trapped on the uh, out in that sea. The problem is, as I see, is that we we funnel everything too much, so we only read things that we want to read about, which limits our scope of the world. It's like uh, these magnet schools where oh, it's a school for performing arts. So we send our kid at twelve to become a actor and all they do is talk about acting and, and all this stuff you can't write an english paper when in, yeah <laughs> when before you'd read the newspaper and you'd stumble on things you would never think about yeah yeah yeah. those are my favorite stories the ones that i would never ever think about but yet i read about it because it was one of these things that it's not part of my life sure it's not part of my expertise you got to get mental floss as a magazine you got to subscribe to them i'm going to get you mental floss uh, hey, if I can get it's free. a wonderful. It's just like that. It's there's not like a three paragraph story in the whole thing. It's all tidbits, it, stupid little fun facts. It's uh, great. Love a, it. As long as they don't try to sugarcoat them and make them feel happy. I and, don't think they do. Yeah, good. <laughs> I, I don't uh, think they're political at all. Uh, no, not political. Just in general, just make them. You know, they. I see a lot of things as they they try to. Oh, stay away from this and don't do that. Oh, it's no, like, it's no. more like the history of farting or history of sna- sneakers. See, or, that's the history know. of sneakers, not necessarily of farting. I don't think there's you know a history I mean. to it. The, the great battle, the battle it's, of a bulge was not about farting. Listen, it had to happen once. It happened It happened Where, all the time. You don't have a who dog, do you? Ha- no. Who had the first fart? That's what I want to know. It came, who was the first one? Someone in the water went, bloop, 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 and went what was that? <laughs> they thought it was an attack and they ran. You think my it was dog, an amoeba? My dog still thinks it's somebody else. <laughs> He'll do it right in front of you and then look around like, what was that? We're under attack. And then run, you know. And, oh, that was, who was that? That was you. So so they can find you at the, the housekeeperspodcast.com, but also speaker Ralph Peterson. Yep, especially, especially if you are in housekeeping situation. Especially if where, you're in management, if you're looking for somebody to talk management. But Real you, management, but not you, this sugar-coated stuff. Yeah, but you specialize in housekeeper management, housekeeping management and like facility operators Absolutely. and things like that. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedule Absolutely. to sit down with me. And, uh, you know, I definitely will pay you back now because I remember when we first met, it was in Maine. It we wasn't Maine. We were in like a resort. It's true. Tra- trapped hundreds of miles away That's from right. civilization. <laughs> kind and of like we are now, right? Kind of like we were at the airport, uh, <laughs> which is the same. And so you, you, you were nice enough to buy me dinner. I'm and, a gentleman, And Craig. so I am going to repay that right now. Love it. Once again, I want to thank Ralph Peterson for joining me on this week's show. Always remember, I am constantly looking for guests. If you know of a great expert who has a great story, has great insight, email me, craig at speakercraigprice.com. Remember to send out people to realitycheckpodcast.com, the Facebook page. We've got Twitter accounts. We've got everything you could possibly imagine. There's no reason you can't find us. See you next week. (laughs) 